Um, Sherry Honklow was a former vice presidential um, nominee uh, in the 2012 um, election cycle. And she also has been an amazing activist um, in the Phil in Pennsylvania, in the Philadelphia area, and um, she's known for um, shaking things up and and letting the chips fall where they may, and then pointing out the inequities in the system and um, pushing people to make changes in that. And so we're very proud to have Sherry as a part of this particular political party. And so please welcome Sherry Hunkler. Good morning. So I've been asked to say a couple things and then uh, bring up some additional speakers. Uh, OK, so I've been asked to say something about my experience in the Green Party running as a candidate. Uh, I ran for sheriff in Philadelphia. I stole that entire idea uh, based on um, African Americans in the South who ran uh, to try and have impact on stopping the lynching. Uh, I then uh, had the honor of running for vice president on the Green Party ticket. Uh, when people ask me what was that experience like, I'm sure Ajamu will join me in saying it's pretty much like getting hit by a Mack truck. Uh, twice or three times, uh, but, it's a, but it's a hell of an experience. And then uh, most recently, uh, I really went through a serious loss of innocence running in my own district for state representative in the 197. And I, I want to start off this morning, first of all, by acknowledging, and if you could stand, people that uh, worked day and night on the 197. Uh, come on, stand up, come on. Stand up, see there, you're cordial. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, a short backdrop is that on the, you know, when they say politics are local, they're local. On the very block that I live in the poorest district in the state of Pennsylvania in Kensington, where maybe you've recently seen on the news with uh, Dr. Oz coming because there was 10,000 needles about uh, 14 blocks from my house where people shoot heroin in order to escape, I learned about what it means to really run for office in a frontline community. That's pretty much, not pretty much, that is uh, run by the Democratic Party, also known as the local mob, and it has not a damn thing to do with Russia. And as they're talking about the Russians stealing the election, I'm watching the fact that they stole my election in the 197 district, and it's not appearing on any of the progressive media. You're not hearing about it on the radio shows. My election should have been a slam dunk. I ran against the local parking authority guy that nobody had a damn idea who the hell he was. And on election day, the joke was, Sherry, you didn't get the menu. You know what the menu was? How much money it cost each ward leader in order to get you a certain percentage in each of the voting booths. I was an election observer in El Salvador and in Venezuela. The corruption that I saw in my district on election day, in which Hillary Kane had the privilege of answering the phone, or the, the horror of answering the phone, 
all day long to one person after another making complaints about what was happening on voting day. Well, some people say to me, Sherry, I wasn't very happy with the numbers in the district. Well, you know what? How can anybody be happy when they stole and took the same numbers from the last election and used it in this election to elect an, uh, uh, the parking authority guy? Until we begin to get serious of ensuring that we have our own election monitors, our own election judge, and we fill every voting booth in America with people on the inside, we will never know the true numbers of any election. So all of you that are talking about running for office, if you think that the problem is in Russia, you're about ready to have a rude awakening. So as we went around and saw brothers and sisters being paid in between the housing projects, as we saw them pass out stamps for the other opponent from the seat inside the election booth, as we produced video after video after video of election judges getting paid money to ensure that I was not elected on election day, we made a decision to raise the necessary $7,000 and we're going to federal court. Well, you know, those of us that live in the frontline communities know what that means. It means I hope I'm here next year to tell you how it went. Because as soon as we announce that, everybody on my block was issued notices that they were gentrifying my block. And last week, as I began to take everything out of my house because I was told that they were going to gentrify my apartment complex, put everything into storage, you know, because you have to make your choices. Do I raise the $7,000 and do the money to go forward with the fight as they keep trying to tell me, give it up, give it up? And so as we loaded everything on the trucks and brought it to storage, in between coming back with our crew to take the next load of storage and put it in, uh, my next load of my stuff from my apartment and put it into storage, I came back and the property manager was ordered to take all of my stuff, including my son's Wii U, his games, his comic books, you name it, and throw it into a huge dumpster a block away across the street. So I came back and of course called the police department, filed a report, you name it, and then learned two days ago that they never received any kind of money from HUD to do any kind of gentrification to any of the houses on my block. So the first thing everybody says is, of course, you've got to get a lawyer, fight that. But this is what it means to run for office in a frontline community. Within 24 hours, both of my tires were sliced again, my belongings thrown into the trash, and my son and myself, after being known as a homeless advocate, entered homelessness for the first time again in my life. And people know that when I talk about me being homeless again in my life, we're not just talking about me. We're talking of anywhere up to 22 some people at any given time that reside in my house. And so now some of those folks are having to sleep in cars. 
I can't take anybody, uh, any of the kids in from the city because right now I'm hiding in plain sight waiting to go to federal court. And yet I turn on the television and have to hear about Russia and how people are not happy with the numbers. Well, let me tell you this. It's time for us to wake up, to realize that we really are at war, and that if we're serious about having people of color and frontline communities in this party, it's going to take more than caucuses. It's going to take more than conversations. It's going to take investing in frontline community elections to ensure <laughs> the uplifting of the lives of the 55,000 people in the district of the 197. And that's why we called our campaign, We Are the 197. Because the 197 is not about Sherry Honkala or members of the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. If they can get away with stealing an election in a small, impoverished community that has sent one Democrat after another to jail for like the last 60 years, well, damn it, where it is it that we're going to begin? So we're tired of the drugs. We're tired of the mass incarceration. And quite frankly, Guillermo's happy because he's sleeping on a dorm bed tonight. We need your support. We need you to follow this thing, to post it, to highlight it, to write about it, to ask all these damn progressives why they're only talking about Trump and Russia and why the hell aren't you talking about the 197? Because it's my friends that are sleeping in the cars right now it's those little kids that thought that they had some place to sleep that nobody will take them into foster care. This is personal. We're never going to take this menu. The head, of the, the head of the Democratic Party called me and said, Sherry, you know, this could have been a shoe-in. If you would have just decided to switch to be a Democrat, you could have been state rep right now. Well, you know what? The Republican, Lucinda Little, she said, Sherry, damn it, you better run again because I'm going to vote for you. <laughs> and so Lucinda Little, the Republican, and myself, and the Green Party in Pennsylvania, we're going to federal court. We're going to live stream it. We're going to issue subpoenas for the head of the Democratic Party. They've already gotten a lawyer from DC to try and dismiss the case. But we're going to put every one of these bastards on the stand. So, like they say in the movie Mouseland, if you've ever seen it, and people know I talk about it all the time, you can lock up a mouse or the people in the district of the 197, but you can't lock up an idea. And we're going to ensure that the whole country knows that not El Salvador, Venezuela, but Kensington, Philadelphia needs intervention and election monitors 
and to ensure that we have a right to something as sacred as going in the damn voting booth and being able to decide who we want to run our district. Thank you very much.